Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and sort of a discussion video on the next series I'd like to try and run. Now, I, I'm bouncing around names for it. It's just kind of a, basically a ba uh, Battletech battle report series. So the idea, and I've mentioned this in some of my videos, is to get the community involved in some kind of way. Now, Battletech doesn't have really a multiplayer mode. I mean, you can go player, player v player, one-on-one -on -one battles, and that's okay, I guess. But what I like is a group of people working together to fight a common enemy. So, and you know, this could evolve later on where we've got two groups of people, one on one side, one on another side. Obviously they can't really fight because obviously there's no multiplayer mode in Battletech. But as you can see here, this is kind of, a, I just threw this together in about an hour. So generating maps and scenarios is going to be relatively easy for this. Um, so all the red locations here with the letters on them, they're all um, hard and strong points. So the goal would be to capture all of those and keep them from the enemy. Um, and once you've captured all of them, the battle's won and it's over. So um, the green are our starting locations and are so also our defense points. So if an enemy captures one, um, we have to respawn and kind of go back and, and recapture it from them. Now the mechs on the actual field here, uh, these will these are basically like mission types. So think of this as like playing on a um, tabletop with a map and counters. Okay, so that's kind of how it's laid out. So this this point down here is a point that can be flipped. It's got two dots here which represent a two skull mission so whoever moves down to take this place it's got to play the two skull mission and it's got you know you got to do like a base capture or something like that right uh, or a rescue or something that involves getting in and you know fighting at a base location right it can even be a, it can even be an attack and defense something like that right so you would go in you do you perform your mission if you're successful or whatever and it has to be like a two skull um, or something like that like I still got to figure out how we would do that based on the lances we have, but um, like in who's playing and what they're playing. But um, yeah, so you, you know, you go and take it, you play your two skull mission, we capture it, we flip the point, and your unit would be like a, a marker on the board as well, whoever it is, whatever unit you, you've decided to play, you'll show up as a marker on the board. Um, and then I'm still trying to work out movement. I was thinking that like if we do smaller hexes, we could do it so that you take the slowest movement, walk movement, of whatever, like your vehicles and your mechs. And so if you've got like, like a demolisher, let's say it's movement 3-5, you can move three hexes. That's as far as you can move on your quote-unquote turn, right? So you're slower moving than everybody else. So if you want to take this point and then take this one and you've got a demolisher, well, it's like 3, 6, 9, and then you'd be able to attack, right? Whereas other people who are moving with like let's say a lot of medium mechs and they've got their slowest is 5.8 then they can move like 5 hexes to get to where they're going right so that I got to figure out too how we're going to run turns if we're going to run turns or not I don't know uh, and then the mech counters on the board each of these represent kind of a loose style mission so they can be battles or whatever you want to make them um, so any, any mech on the board with an L is a light mission or a light lance so it would be between half a skull and one and a half skulls the mediums would be between two and three and a half skulls and then the heavies are four to five skulls right now what i'm probably going to do i don't know if i'll run a lance personally myself i might uh or run it as a backup back here or something um but i know there's some so if you don't have the game right but you want to get a lance going in game I can run the lance for you, or if another community member wants to, to volunteer as well, they can run a lance for you um, and let you make the decisions based off of that. So um, we'd have to figure out how that would work, but you kind of, you know, it's going to be your, your lance name, your lance colors. You can make the decision um, for what you want the um, composition to be, um, the lo mech loadouts, and the play style too, right? Um, so if you want to play like a lot of close in mechs with like a lot of SRMs or something, then the, the build and the salvage will be based around, around getting that kind of gear, right? The close range fighting. Or if you want to play like full stealth, 
once again, like any gear that's that's taken on the battlefield from those missions played by whoever's playing it for you, will gear their their drops or their selection on the drops based on that. So if I find, you know, like a, a stealth system or whatever, then that's a that's an automatic grab, right? You grab that to implement into the lance. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, what I would do is run the enemy in the background. So for instance, you know, the, the heavy lances here would get a movement of three, the mediums would get a movement of like four probably or five, and the lights would get a movement of, you know, up to six or something like that, or five or six. Um, and then the drop ship represents their mobility. So for instance, if we're playing by turns, and I'm not saying that that's what we'll do, but because it might be a little more free flowing than that, that the dropship can on one turn leave here and land here, pick up the heavy and redistribute it somewhere. As long as it's like in a flat field or something like that, right? it's obviously not going to land in the ocean or in a lake or on top of buildings or whatever. But if it can find an open area to drop an enemy, you know, you'll see it move on the map on the next episode. It'll be down here and you'll be like, oh shit, the last, the last one, it was up here. It's picking up the heavy lance. Where is that going to be next turn, like next episode? There's also going to be hidden units on the board, so I'll build this, you know, pre, um, pre the match, and then there'll be x x amount of units on the board. Some of them you might see, some of them you might not. Uh, depending on where you move, you'll detect units, um, and you know, like depending on how good, like we have to figure, like like that's the kind of thing we have to figure out. Do we want to make it that structured? Do we want to make it simpler than this, where it's just like. You know, like this is a lot of capture points, but this is you know saying that the that this this particular series or battle report would last like maybe ten episodes or twenty episodes or something like that, where it's like, you know, so and so is dropping a lance back here to fight this guy, and it also depends on how many players we have too. So like I said, if we have a lot more players, then the map can be a lot like the hexes and the map can be a lot smaller. Um, and it can scroll too, so we could start here, like this would be our front line, and then there'll be less capture points. Once we capture this, it scrolls along. Uh, you know, I can't really do it here because I, I, like this is the maximum size of the map, right? So if I move it, it's um, like you're not going to be able to see. So, um, oh yeah, you, you guys are locked. So if I grab the map and scroll it, there's like I don't have anything else after that, right? So. Um, yeah, so that what we would do is we would figure out all that kind of stuff, um, how we were going to do what, right? And also we'd have to figure out what the starts would be. So I've been thinking in the back of my head some ideas. So it could be, you know, pre-clan invasion. Um, you could start off, like or like just before the clans invade, just as they're taking the outer rim worlds, you could start off as pirates. Um, and you're uh, you're on one of the outer rim worlds, and the clans attack, right? Um, so you'd be fighting clan units, or it could be house versus house combat, and you could, like, we'd have to choose a time frame too. Like, I I don't I like I kind of like around for me it's personally it's like 2060 to 2065, so it's after the clan invasion. Um, that way, everyone's kind of got access to kind of everything in a way, so. There's, you know, if you get clan gear, there's a, there's reasons why you could get clan gear, things like that, right? Um, and also higher tech weapons and stuff. There's a reason for it. Um, and for me, that's that's kind of where rogue tech shines is all the advanced weapons and stuff. So taking them out of the game, uh, it's a little less fun for me. But like I said, I'll, I'll default to what a lot like the majority rules. What if everyone wants to go back to twenty? Or 3025, sure, that's, let's do 3025, that's fine too, right? Um, but once I said, like I said, the, the advantage of Rogue Tech is that, you know, you've got so much modern technology, it's, it'd be a shame not to use it. Anyway, so that being said, um, so other ideas would be, you know, um, like doing the Battle of Tukid where we start off as uh, Comstar or the clans, right? Um, or you could do uh, the Battle for Luthien, which was Smoke Jaguar, I think, against um, House Karita at their home world. Um, and you could take either side. Uh, what else? Like, there's, like, I mean, I'm sure you guys have, like, your own ideas of what can be done. But then that would dictate what the start would be, like, what lance you would start, right? So, for instance, if we take the first example where we're pirates on um, 
one of the outer worlds and we're being invaded by the clans uh, and we're trying to you know get the clans off of the world um, then we all start off with pirate units and you build your units from there uh, if it's house v house then you just start off as one of whatever house you're, you're doing um, if it's if you know and it could be something as simple as being you know mercenaries hired by um, a certain house to attack another house right and that's what it would like we would be facing let's say for instance you know the house steiner right but we would be hired by draconis combine or something so we would be fighting for them and you could take mercenary units you could start off as mercenary you could start off as pretty much anything you could start off as a draconis combine unit you know whatever so it would that would just dictate what we take and then i hope this doesn't crash here if we go into here looks like i'm okay um so the starting it could be all different. We, I think we would have to agree. Like, I mean, I could lay down the rules to start, uh, but I think for this first one, community involvement would be um, much appreciated. Just to, so I could feel everybody out, you know, what you'd like to like, you'd like what you'd like to do. Um, but I'm thinking, just in the back of my head, is leaving the mechs parts for mech assembly at five, and then not being allowed to choose mech parts in salvage or being allowed to choose one mech part in salvage. And the reason for it is if this is a continuing fight, generally you're not going to be able to grab like a full mech and then reassemble it and get it back into the battle that same, like during that time. Um, I, I don't know, like I, I, I'm still trying to work it out in my head. Grabbing gear and updating the mechs you currently have is one thing. Um, but maybe it's not five, maybe it is three then. You know, if we're just relying on the random roll to see if you can get a mech, maybe we go down to three. I don't know. Company type would depend on the scenario we decide to do, whatever we decide to do. Um, for that matter, we could all try, <laughs> we could all be like defending a planet as tankers. You know, that would be down the, down the road. We could try one like that, whatever, right? You know, uh, and I, then I think things like this, like friendly fire, like I, I think it's all going to come down to your personal preference and what you enjoy to play, like how you like to play. So friendly fire, you can turn it off if you want. I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll dictate that you have to um, have friendly fire, or for that matter, like I usually put my mech recovery chance at seventy percent, um, just to have an increased chance to get stuff back. You can set it to a hundred if you want. It, it doesn't really matter all that much to me. Contract variance, it will depend on, on the planet you're on. So if you're on a three skull planet. Um, like you'd have to figure a way that you're going to be able to run the the skull level of missions. So whether you're jumping from planet to planet to do that is fine. I find it really depends on where you are on the map because sometimes planets are really close between like half skull and let's say five skulls. So you can easily get those those different variances by jumping planet to planet. But the series that I'm playing right now, Battle for Astrakhazi, I rarely jump system. And the reason for it is because I don't want to um, be spending the time going from like spending 20 days to go from planet to planet to change my skull level um, is an issue. So I've been setting my contract difficulty up to like five. So then I can on the same planet, I can run two or three low skull missions offline to be able to get some gear. And then when I'm ready to play online, I've got like three and a half to five skull missions that I can take that show up. Now, sometimes once again, you're only going to get a certain number of missions in your in your readout, so you might not get the ones that you want. You may have to jump planet, but this way it allows me to like on my Battle for Astrakhazi play to maximize my my dollars, um, and that's only for playstyle. But then for other things like like down here, I, I'm suggesting that like you can start however you want here, but I'm suggesting starting with your commander with more experience. Advanced mech wars and running higher chance, completely up to you. Pilots per system, completely up to you. Uh, mech warrior progression, completely up to you. Um, I would prefer a slower, but I think it would be completely, you know, you guys decide whether you want your pilots to die or not. Um, I, I would say it's completely up to you. Starting money, I would go with max, uh, only because I, I'm thinking that we should set a certain number of, um, before we start play, we should set a certain number of months that your unit can go through in order to get your mechs into shape on kind of how you want them. Giving yourself the maximum starting money um, and allowing you to select, like, 
we'd have to figure out if you're going to allow if we're going to be allowed to take mech salvage or not. Um, I I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air on it. Um, I think it would depend on the campaign. But if we set like if we say you know starting money at sixty you know the maximum here, um, six hundred fifty eight thousand or six million five hundred eighty thousand. Sorry, um, parts for mech assembly three. Let's say. Um, you could go for six months before starting. Um, and, you know, you'd be allowed to upgrade your Argo so that you could drop more units for yourself. I think that kind of stuff is probably all fine. Although, I think you should try and, you know, um, balance yourself if you find things are getting are too easy for you. Then, you know, lower the number of mechs you drop, things like that. Just to keep it, like, a, like a relatively fair. Because it's, what's, you know, there's nothing to stop somebody from taking three mech salvage, taking a few missions, grabbing a couple heavy mechs, and then taking the low two skull missions and just rolling through them, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, I think it's all going to come down to honesty and fairness. I won't be upset either way if people cheat, do their stuff on their own time, because really this is for the fun of the community, right? So if you're enjoying if you're enjoying it, then I, that's all that matters to me. I, I, you know, I just want people to have fun. Um, and get, you know, have some kind of community involvement and communication between people I think would be nice in the com comment section and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to start a game here and then we'll go and, and do the um, the mech pilot. Alright, now as far as pilots go, like, I mean, it, like, this is pretty much self-obvious. Like, if, like, you know, if you're going to be a pirate or whatever, then you can be from anywhere. But if you're, if we're going to do certain things where you're, like, a clan, you can be true or freeborn. Uh, you just choose your whatever here. I mean, it doesn't really make that much difference on this side, but you just choose wherever you're from. The interests can be anything. You guys just decide what you want, obviously. And then the career, once again, decide what you want. doesn't really matter. Um, I will, although I will say, like, some of these where, like, for instance, like, veteran gives you the random bushwhacker, and then is it Corsair? Yeah, random pirate mech. So, like, if we were all going to be pirates, let's say, let's say we choose the first the first thing and we're all pirates, then this would be one of those things where we'd say, okay, well, we all have to choose, um, you all have to choose Corsair to start, let's say. So, we just have, each each scenario would have its own kind of little rules, uh, but then anything else is, is you know, like, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter, right? So, um, so, yeah, you would choose whatever you wanted, and then, you know, let's just go our one day here and get our mech. So, you know, what I was saying earlier about um, you get X number of days um, to, um, well, Hollander. That mech is ready Thanks. To fight, Commander. Anyway, um, so we would go X number of days before we would actually start the fight. So it gives you a chance to kind of like, you know, like you're not using the stock mechs that Check you get, you get right at the very commander. beginning. Pretty great, um, right? You can actually spend time making adjustments to them and get them working how you want them. So, um, like if you want to drop one out of your lineup, like the mongoose, for instance, so that we can get the medium lasers for something else or heat sinks for something else, go ahead and like you, you would have the time to do it, right? And you organize your lance, so at least you like at least you're not starting off fresh. It just kind of makes it feel like you've been in battle for more than just one day, kind of thing to, at the start. So we, we just choose an X number of days before we get to starting. Um, pilots, doesn't matter, like whatever you want to do for your pilots, it's completely up to you. Like I said, I, like to, I don't like to start with the, uh, with the, um, the proper named mechs, mech pilots. I, I like to just start with random, uh, random low level guys. So, but that would be completely up to you. Uh, as far as settings for the game too, so like if you don't have like heavy metal or any of that stuff, like all the, the DLCs. Doesn't matter. Like, just, just play it however you want. Um, if you don't want to use Erbies, don't use Erbies. If you want to use nuclear weapons, feel free to go ahead and use nuclear weapons. It, it, like, that's that'll be completely up to you. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell, I think. Um, uh, there may be a things that I've missed. Um... So let me know what you guys think. Like I'm open to suggestions. Um, like none of this is is locked in in any way, shape, or form. And if the idea just seems garbage to everybody, we'll just trash it and do something else. It doesn't matter to me. Like I, I can just go back to recording the same, 
Um, like, like I'll probably still be playing a series at the same time, but you know, this kind of thing will will um, give us the ability to to get a little bit of community involvement. Um, now, I don't know. Maybe I need to start a Discord, um, or I, I don't know how to run this. Like, I'm not very good with social media, which is why I generally don't have like a Twitter or you know a Facebook page or whatever. I can set up a Discord and get something going. That's fine too. Um, I was thinking though, as I was kind of loading in to um, the pilot screen, that if we were going to do, like if I was going to run a lance for somebody, then we might, like I might be able to do it live, like do a live playthrough. Um, and then whoever it is that I'm running the lance for can just, you know, make their comments. Um, and we can do short, like we can do short live playthroughs where, you know, they can, we, we can do like a lance building thing where it's like, okay, I've done X number of missions for you. Um, here's the gear I was able to acquire based on what you think you'd like to see on your mechs. Now, how would you like to load them out? Or we could spend an episode just loading them out, right? Making sure I'll make sure we have enough C bills to do a, like a good loadout on them. And then we can spend time loading them out, you know? And then, you know, I would run the mission and maybe we run like, I don't know, like it's all gonna depend on how much time I have and, and what and how this plays out. But it could be something that we do live, you know, where, um, the person who's running the lance um, will just, you know, say, you know, like I, I can say, okay, this guy's turn. Where do you want me to move? Am I, move, am I moving up here? Who am I shooting at? You know, how close do you want me to get? Um, and we'll just do it that way. And I, it may take a while, um, which is, I think, one of the reasons why I want to limit the number of mechs that we have, because if we, if everybody's got eight mechs and four vehicles, the battles are going to take forever. Uh, and if I'm running or other people are running other campaigns for other people, um, then the battles are just going to take like, like some of my longer battles are like hour and a half, two hours sometimes, depending on what I'm playing. Right. And I'm not the fastest player in the world. Like I could make decisions quicker and, and play a lot faster. Um, but like thinking about things as I'm playing and, you know, playing cautiously so I don't lose too much. Um, but I think, you know, if we had lances like you know, between four and six mechs and a couple of vehicles, I think that would probably play a lot faster. Um, and then maybe we need to drop the, the, like the skull rating down a bit here. That's fine too. Like we'll just, we'll have to see how it goes, but I think we should do a test run. Uh, I know there's several people that are interested and want to play. And I know there's uh, people that don't have the game that would like to, to um, uh, get me to run a um, Lance with them. And I'm happy to do that. So, um, please comment in the comment section down below what kind of scenario you guys want to see. Um, this is, like I said, this is just thrown together. It's a proof of concept. I put this together in an hour, so don't feel like this is locked in in any way. It was just something I, I was like bouncing around in my head all week and I was like, okay, how are we going to do the map? How could it work? You know, and it, like once again, it's tricky, like I said, because it's not a, Battletech's not a multiplayer game, so we'd have to figure out how to get this to work. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it too, is if you're playing tabletop Battletech and you want to run scenarios like and be a part of this and you're running, you're playing tabletop, feel free to like to let me know and it, just let me know the results of your tabletop battles because I can put a unit on the board for you um, and you don't have to go by skulls. We can just say, okay, you, you ran this mission here and, and you won whatever, right? So we can figure that out and then, you know, we can do like at the very beginning, um, before we start, we can do an episode where we show everybody's lances and their loadouts. Um, we'd have to, like, I think that's why we'd, we'd need a Discord, because you can just send me a screen grab of uh, what you've got as loadouts. Um, also, if you, I'm, I don't know if any guys, if you guys do any YouTube videos or not, or you post videos, if you want to record it and, at your mission and post it, um, then what I'll do is I can put on the map, um, your unit and the and then we'll have some kind of symbol that shows that you know um like maybe it's a number or a letter or some kind of symbol that shows that you're actually recording the video and then in the description for that episode i'll put a link to the like we'll just put a link to your video so people can go watch that one too and see the battle i think that would be cool because in my mind's eye that was kind of what i was seeing originally but then i'm like you know not everybody records you know not everybody wants to record um some people don't have the game so they can't record like it's you know what I mean so we'll we'll work it so that we can get as many possible people playing 
you know, in and get them involved as possible. So yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I know a lot of the ideas aren't a hundred percent flushed out, or maybe I'm like at thirty percent or twenty-five percent or something like that flushed out. But I think we can get this to work. And even if we just kind of like run like a quick scenario, like like with maybe like two or three um, uh, flip points and a bunch of units on the board, and we just run like a really short campaign, uh, even using like stock loadouts, we don't even need to like spend three months for the units. Like maybe it's a month or something. You just you know take the max C bills and then just build your mechs how you want to build them, and then when you're ready, we just go. Um, and do something really short just to see how it would work. Um, yeah, I think it would kind of be cool. And like, like, and even if, like, there's so many possibilities. Like, you could do like if we if we are playing house versus house. Like, if if it's like, you know, a war of like let's say um, Federated Commonwealth and Draconis Combine, let's say, um, and we're playing house v house, then we could have like you know like one scenario like this where we fight out the battle and then create a new scenario you keep your same guys and run the, the next scenario and maybe that's a thing too maybe it's like maybe we don't you know shift out of scenarios and do different fighting maybe it's a continuation from mission to mission we start off with a really small map and then as we get you know bigger and bigger units we can go to bigger and bigger maps i don't know i think there's a lot of possibilities here um but let me let, i know i've said this a thousand times let me know what you think in the comments down below um who would be interesting? I'm probably going to start a poll after I post this video, so keep your eye open for that and just see how many people are actually interested in uh, being a part of it. Whether you've got the game and want to like like run a, um, your own lance, if you don't have the game and you want someone to run the lance, um, if there's too many people like that, um, uh, I'm unfortunately going to have to default probably to being able to just run the people's lance that. Are like really common, like really um, common co comment posters. So I know Fist of Dorn was saying that he'd be interested in me running a lance for him, and he posts on a like a ton of videos. So um, I'll have to go probably that route first. So whoever like top commenters are, I'd probably go that route. And then once I got to my max, then I'd have to say, look, m maybe this like maybe next time, right? So or unless there's somebody else that would want to volunteer to help out, that'd be great. But if not, then I'll have to. Like, I have no idea how many people want to get involved with this or not, right? What would be cool, though, in the future is if we can get, like, other YouTubers involved who are, um, who play as well. And they can run their own lance and have, like, you be able to see, like, my part of the scenario. If I'm running somebody else's, you'll be able to see their part of the scenario. Whoever else is recording, you know, you'll be able to see their part of the scenario. Another YouTuber would have their part of the scenario. We all put links to the video. Um, like I, I can put up like a just a general map video and then everyone has a link off of there so we could put like you know the different units um, on the map with a letter or whatever and then in the comment section or in the uh, description section there would just be a link to all the videos so you could come back to this one and you know this would just be the map and then it would just you just click on the link for the each of the individual battles to see how each of them went it played out I think that would be kind of a cool thing too so um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm going to end this up video here. I know it was kind of long, but uh, I'm still kind of working things out of my head. All right, until next time, we'll see you all later.